Hi everyone, uh, so I wanted to make a quick video for those of you working on Prelab 6 uh, on climate and biomes. Um, this is going to be really hopefully helpful and important. I wasn't planning on doing it, but the more I was kind of sitting here, I, I figured it would be useful. Um, it's going to be hopefully very helpful when you get to Lab 6 on climate and biomes. We're going to be talking about the Keppen Geiger climate classification system uh, in lecture, or we already have. Um, and I want to kind of go over how to use the flowchart because some of you might not have used a flowchart like this before. And I figured it could be a useful tool uh, to kind of see it done and, and walk through an example uh, together. So you can see a couple things on my screen here. Um, over here you see uh, the Keppen classification flowchart um, with a whole bunch of different parameters on there that we're going to walk through. Uh, and then on the left, you see uh, climate data, average monthly temperatures and average monthly precipitation, and annual average temperature and annual average precipitation on the far right for Traverse City, Michigan, latitude 44.763. That puts us in the northern hemisphere, right? Okay, so we're going to walk through an example of this, and we're going to move back and forth between the two windows that I have uh, presented before you. So the first one, we're gonna start up in the top left corner of the Keppen classification flow chart screen. And we see this thing that says, is every T, T just means temperature, mean monthly temperature, is every T less than 10 degrees Celsius? Okay, so that's where we're gonna start on the left. Is every temperature less than 10 degrees Celsius. Here we're testing to see whether or not it satisfies the conditions necessary for an E or polar climate, all right? So if we look at our graph or our, uh, our table up top, no, it doesn't satisfy that. There are four temperatures, May, June, July, and August, where the annual, or sorry, the mean monthly temperature exceeds 10 degrees Celsius. So no, it is not a polar climate. Okay, then the next question, after we get through that, is it a B climate? Now, this is where most people get tripped up using the Kepp and Geiger climate classification system. Is it a B climate or not? Well, to answer that, we need to go to graph one, which we see listed in the Kepp and classification flow chart. Uh, under, is it a B climate? We see use graph one. Now, this is graph one that you're seeing before you. You see three different things. Even distribution is the leftmost plot, A. B says summer concentration. C says winter concentration. What does that mean? Well, in this case, we're looking to see when the most rain is falling during the year. Now, to satisfy any of those conditions, we're not going to use all three of these. We're only going to use one, and we need to figure out which one it is that we're going to use. To do so, we have to answer a couple of questions. One. Does 70% of the monthly precipitation fall in the high sun period? If so, it is a summer concentration. If 70% of the monthly precipitation falls in the low sun period, that gives us a winter concentration. If neither of those conditions are satisfied, we have an even distribution. Now, I always check for the high sun months. That's just how I've always done it, how I prefer to do it. So in this way, if total or if the total of all high sun months is greater than 70 percent of the annual precipitation that gives us a summer concentration likewise if the total of all high sun months is less than 30 percent of the winter concentration that gives us a low sun or winter concentration if the total of all high sun months is greater than 30 percent but less than 70%, that gives us an even distribution. This just means that we only have to do one calculation, which makes our, all of our lives a little bit easier. So we're in the Northern Hemisphere, so our high sun period is April to September. You see I have them bolded uh, in the table above. Now, if we add all of those together, 8.74 plus 8.76 plus 7.47, plus 7.01, plus 8.10, plus 9.17. That gives us 49.25 centimeters of precipitation. Okay. 49.25 divided by 90.95, which is our average, 
bold that there for us, which is our average uh, annual precipitation, gives us 0.5356. Multiply that by 100 to get a percentage, and we have 53.53%. Well, that's greater than 30, but less than 70, which means we have an even distribution. Okay, so we know that we're going to be using the leftmost plot, even distribution A, the left side here. Okay, now the first thing you might be saying to yourself is, okay, well, we look at the uh, horizontal axis and that's mean annual precipitation and our mean annual precipitation is 91.95. Oh, it's somewhere off the chart. All right, so we have to, I'll say we have to uh, interpolate and we have to make some assumptions here that it's, these are linear relationships. Um, fortunately, if we look at our mean annual temperature of 7.29 degrees, we're somewhere in the middle of the chart. That firmly places us, if we th consider both of those, in a humid or A, C, D, or E climate, not a B climate. Sometimes it'll fall on the graph or on, on the plots that you see here. Um, sometimes it'll be just that extreme. It's very firmly a humid climate. Makes total sense. It's Traverse City. We're dealing with uh, a humid continental climate in you know, the middle portion of North American continent. Easy enough. Let's continue. So, no, it's not a B climate. All right. Is every temperature greater than or equal to 18 degrees Celsius? Here we're testing to see if it's an A or tropical climate. All right. No. Every temperature is not greater than or equal to 18 degrees Celsius. In fact, January, February, March, April, May, October, November, and December all fall well below that mark. So... No, we do not have an A climate, so we continue on down the plot. Is every temperature greater than or equal to negative 3 degrees Celsius? Here we're testing to see if we have a temperate climate with minimal temperature ranges or not. All right. Well, January and February fall below that, so no. We don't have a C climate. Continue advancing on here. So that means we're dealing with a D or continental climate. Continental climates are typified by very wide temperature ranges, uh, being oftentimes uh, in the middle of the continent without many major controlling bodies of water. So our temperature range is much broader than a coastal environment would typically see or a temperate environment would typically see in more of the lower mid-latitudes. All right, next question. Is the driest winter precipitation less than a tenth of the wettest summer precipitation? Okay, so we've got our uh, driest winter is 5.16 centimeters. Our wettest summer is 9.17. 5.16 divided by 9.17 equals, if you are doing it in fraction form, which we are in this case, one tenth, right? That comes to 23 fiftieths, which is greater than a tenth. It's nearly a half. All right, easy enough. That says that our first two modifiers are D, capital D, and a lowercase f, or a DF. We're almost there. All right, next question. Is the coldest temperature less than negative 38 degrees Celsius? No, none of them uh, fall below negative 38 degrees Celsius. Okay. Is the hottest temperature greater than or equal to 22 degrees Celsius? No, all of them are colder than that. Okay, we continue moving down. We're almost there are at least four temperatures greater than or equal to 10 degrees Celsius. Yes, we have a winner. We have a DFB climate. 
DFB climate, uh, if you look in your textbook, is typified as a humid continental climate with mild summers and the warmest month below 22 degrees Celsius. And that's how you do a Keppen cla uh, classification flowchart and how you get your Keppen climate. Now, sometimes it'll be, it won't always be a DF or a D climate. It'll oftentimes, we have a good mix of them. Um, I would argue, or I would, I would caution you against uh, assuming that it's a B climate. If all of yours are turning up to be B climates, you've, you've done something wrong and you need to go back and check your math. Um, oftentimes you're not comparing the high sun or the low sun right, um, which is based on hemisphere. Remember our high sun versus low sun depends on uh, whether it's the June solstice time or the you know December solstice time, winter or summer. So be careful with that. Um, I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you have any questions with this, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, we will see you for the Kepin Biome Lab uh, this coming up pretty soon. So, all right, everyone have a great day. Thank you much.